Hi and welcome to GRVO TV, G's Reviews, Views and Opinions. I'm doing a video today on my brand new lens. It's very exciting. And here it is. Well, here's the box anyway. There's the lens. It is a Nikon Zoom 43-86mm f3.5 constant aperture lens. So, why have I bought that? Um, two reasons why. It sort of fills a gap between my 18 to 70 and 80 to 18 to 70 and 80 to 200 so it fills that little gap in the middle but I wanted to try one of the older uh, non autofocusing um, and non sort of um, CPU lens they call it a non CPU lens basically what that means is when you plug a newer lens into a modern Nikon camera the camera recognizes the lens the lens tells the camera what it is what its focal length is what its maximum aperture is etc all the data is then in the camera and that uses it for auto focusing metering etc so on these uh, older lenses whilst the mount fits and it, it you know it fits onto the the camera okay it doesn't talk to the camera so it doesn't tell it what it is so the camera goes well, I don't don't know what what you are and you can still use it in manual, etc. But the nice thing about the Nikon D7000 is that you can tell it what the lens is to a certain degree. Now, it works better with prime lenses because it doesn't really account for the zoom function. So this wouldn't, I don't think it'd be ideal buying a, say a 70 to 200 uh, old lens that, that hasn't got the, the function to talk to the lens. And you'll see why in a minute. So firstly the lens, it, it's a lovely little lens and the benefit of these older lenses is that that's a constant aperture of 3.5 whereas you know, a lot of the modern lenses are 4 to 5.6 or 6.2 or they're 3.5 to 5.6 some of the slightly better ones are 3.5 to 4.5 this is a constant aperture of 3.5 so only one stop away from an f2.8 lens so that's what drew me to it I like the fact that it's the old fashioned push-pull zoom it's not got much of a zoom, you know, it's not much of a range, 43 to 86. But for what I want it for, it's um, it's a nice lens. The focusing is lovely and smooth, but it's miles round. You have to sort of whoa, keep going all the way around to get to it. So you're not going to be using this in circumstances where you need to focus quickly because with the modern digital SLRs, you can't really tell if you're focused anyway. You know, you're, you're relying on, can I see it in focus on the screen? So it's not completely accurate anyway so it's going to be for like portrait work and um, maybe some landscape stuff and you know it's going to be for stationary photography basically but it is nice to use I mean it's lovely and smooth the focus and the zoom is lovely and smooth and then at the back you've got an aperture ring which you have to change to change your aperture so it's not done electronically so what I'll quickly do is just I'll go into the menu and you basically go into the spanner on the menu screen I know you won't be able to see this very clearly but if you've got a D7000 you'll know where this is so you click on the spanner and you scroll right down to the bottom and it's like about three up from the bottom there's a setting called non CPU lens data so you just click on that and you've got um, one to nine lenses I think so you can put nine different um, bits of data on here so I've choose this this is the only lens I've got like this at the moment so it's lens number one and then you get an option to put in the focal length and the maximum aperture well maximum aperture that's easy that's f3.5 obviously maximum means the the widest aperture so smallest number this this lens is a f3.5 to f22 so maximum aperture is f3.5 not 22 I know you probably know that so maximum aperture f3.5 that's in there focal length now you cannot put a zoomed focal length in so you have to choose your focal length and if you look in the instructions what it actually tells you to do is if you've got like this is a 43 to 86 you would put in um, perhaps five different settings and you'd have one at 43 one at 50 one at 60 one at 70 one at 86 and then when you're zoomed into whichever one you go into the menu and choose the one you're on but realistically who's going to do that so my idea is to go for the middle and the closest i can get to the middle option is a focal length of 58 mil so i put it on 58 mil and what that does 
is with that combined with the maximum aperture it allows your camera to matrix meter now if you don't put that data in it won't matrix meter and it won't know what the f-stop is it will just it will change as you change the, the ring but it will go from like naught to 10 or something it doesn't know what it is so I've got my camera now in aperture priority so I set the aperture with the aperture ring it's on 3.5 it shows in the screen as 3.5 and if I change it to 5.6 it changes change it to f11 it changes etc so that all works nicely with the aperture ring and that's quite nice actually using the aperture ring there rather than twiddly button so that's fine I've set the focal length to around the mid mid range of the lens and it works absolutely fine it it meters well the um, the colors are nice and rich it gives nice bokeh it will blow out the background nicely because again it's the f3.5 focusing is not easy I'm not going to lie it's not easy to auto focus on I mean I've been just testing it out today on my dogs and it's virtually impossible to get a shot in focus what I ended up doing was literally um, motor driving and adjusting the focus as you do it and then you'll pick up you know the chance so you'll pick up a shot in focus but as I say that's not really what I've got it for so there you have it um, some of these old lenses they're made in Japan some are good some are bad there's lots of reviews um, on the internet um, this one is um, from about 19 late 1970s I think and there was two versions of this lens particularly one had the writing inside the filter ring and apparently was rubbish and the other one which is this one the later model has the, the writing on the outside of the filter ring and is a you know an absolutely fine no problems lens and it works really well on digital I think so Anyway, that's just a little bit of information. If you are looking to get a non-CPU, older, non-autofocusing lens for a Nikon, um, as I say, it does work. Um, you do have to set it up, but essentially, you know, this is a, as I said, a 3.5 lens. I paid about 50, 60 quid for it. That's 60 quid for it, I think I paid. Something like that, if that. Um, so it's not a lot of money to try it and it you know it will hold its value I, I should think I'd be able to sell it on and, and get that money back um, I'm also looking at getting one of the older but the autofocusing um, they do I uh, think something like a 28 to 105 the old version of that so you know as I get these older lenses I will review them for you because there's not many up-to-date reviews on YouTube whilst you can get information there's not a great deal about them and um, at some point I will obviously take some photos with this and I'll post them on my Flickr page um, for you to see and I'll put the details up on the uh, the end of the video of my Flickr page so you can go and have a look anyway thanks for that this is GRVO TV I'll see you soon bye